I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is great, and he is greatly to be praised. And so we greet you another Sunday from the sanctuary of the Great Open Door Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Richard Nelson, a, a pastor employed by God here as I serve the people of this neighborhood and of this city. We're grateful that you tuned us in for another 
presentation of God's word. We pray that you will be blessed by what you hear. Now, uh, let me uh, uh, make a few quick announcements before the praise scene comes back to us. Uh, first of all, let me uh, thank every member of church for last Sunday's presentation. What a wonderful job we, uh, what a wonderful time we had uh, as we ate the Lord's Supper virtually together. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor J.C. Boyd, for your preaching. Thank you, Pastor Garrett, for your leadership. We look forward to meeting together again next first Sunday as we all gather every church of our network as we eat the Lord's Supper and celebrate his suffering and dying until he comes again for us. Now, secondly, I'm also excited that we finally got our Zoom presentation ready. Uh, we'll be gathered uh, on Zoom Thursday, August the 13th uh, at 7 p.m. Please check your e-blast to make sure uh, for the uh, information to get connected. This e-blast is for the membership uh, of Great Open Door Church so that we can gather and just have a time of fellowship and fun. Uh, listen, I know that some of you are listening from other places and around the city, and even uh, I want to thank my Pleasant Grove friends for every Sunday I see you on, and thank uh, Dr. Charles Hamilton for, for his participation as well, but but this, this, this uh, Zoom presentation ain't for y'all. Pleasant Grove, you know how crazy I am. Reverend Hamilton, you know how crazy I am. I just want to be crazy with the folk that call me pastor. And so we look forward to sharing on Thursday, August the 13th uh, at 7 p.m. Check the e-blast. It will be in there for how you get on and all of those kinds of things. And so we look forward to that. Then finally... Uh, let me say that we're still praying for our membership. Amen. God has done a great work whereby we are glad. Folk are being healed. Folk are being delivered. Folk are being set free. It is, it is great to know that as you preach the gospel about healing, that folk do get healed. God is a good God, and he is no shorter than his word. And so this being second Sunday, we come back again as we talk about uh, the miracles over sickness Today I want to talk to you from Luke chapter 8, beginning at the 43rd verse, and we'll look at this issue of blood. God bless you. Hear the praise scene say. There is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness.
go away with me to the word of God, Luke chapter 8. I want to look at verses uh, 43 through 48. Uh, the Bible says, and I'm reading King James. Uh, the Bible says, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood satched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee. And sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And she said unto her, and Jesus said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. I want to talk about the miracle of sickness. Uh, but this time, I want to focus on this issue of blood. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for the privilege of preaching your word. If it please your preachment, that this people might be pushed from where we are to where you'd have us to be, that our faith might increase and our joy be made full. Use this preachment now to draw us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Search every heart house that hears it, and that soul that is nearest to hell saved before it's eternally too late. We pray that even now, as uh, they are watching and viewing this cast, that you would use it for your glory, for your honor, and at the very end of it, someone might know you in the pardon of their sins. Bless all that is said. Change my words in mid if need be, that it will be exactly what you'd have your people to hear. And we'll give you glory, we'll give you honor, we'll give you praise. We won't take any credit, but we'll give it all to you. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask it now, and we believe you by faith. Amen, and thank God. This issue of blood. At the point of departure, allow me again to express the many options and opinions that folk have about healing. But for believers, the, the people of God, the Bible only is the reliable source for direction and guidance. And so we need to read God's word and discover God's purpose for healing, as well as his instructions and model for asking in faith. The Bible says at least nine things about healing and praying for healing. Number one, healing comes from God. Uh, make no mistake about it. God is the healer. Uh, no scripture condemns the legitimate use of doctors or medical science, but the truth of the matter is that God is the healer. One of the names of God is Jehovah Rapha, which means the Lord who heals. God the Father has the power to heal the whole person, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Well, secondly, the gift of healing is biblical. The Holy Spirit gives gifts unto the church. In 1 Corinthians 12, 9, we read, to another faith and by the same spirit to another, the gift of healing by the same spirit. And so 
the Holy Ghost. He allows folks to have the ability to heal those that are sick. Thirdly, God may say no when we ask for healing. The, the classic example is Paul. He is giving this thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet him. Least he exalt himself above everybody else. And so in 2 Corinthians 12, Paul talks about how he's asked the Lord three times to remove it. And God's answer to him is no. He says uh, unto me, my grace, thy grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul, Paul understood that, that even with God not healing him, that his grace, his power would be sufficient enough to give him strength to do whatever he needed to do. Fourthly, though Christians can hinder their own healing by unconfessed sin, uh, by not asking God to heal them, failure to surrender to God's purpose, the the lack of faith, and because of our own unbelief, we don't get healed. But five, uh, there, there is a process that you need to obey. Call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil and, and, and pray for you. And, and, and the uh, prayers of the righteous will avail much. It will raise the sick, and God it will forgive the sin. Uh, the sixth thing you need to know is that, that you need to stop questioning God and, and yourself about why you can't get healed. Uh, uh, quit, quit playing the game. Do I have enough courage? Did I have enough faith? Yeah, uh, uh, does it honor God? I, 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 do, do I accept God's will for my life? You know, quit asking all of this stuff and just believe God and take him at face value. Do like, like the man who brought his son to Jesus and the disciples couldn't heal him. Uh, just say, Lord, help my unbelief. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what you need to do. You need, you need to get to the point where you really trust God in spite of what it looks like. Quit, quit. I, I, I tell you, we, we, we beat ourselves up asking these dumb questions when all we have to do is trust God. Do I have enough faith? Well, the scripture is clear. If you've got the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. And so it's not the amount of faith, it's how you exercise that faith. Well, seven, you need to understand that Satan is opposed to believers being healed. Uh, Satan is the thief, and the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. It is Jesus that comes that we might have life and that life more abundantly. And so Satan doesn't want you healed, so you, you have to disregard his comments and his thoughts and trust what God has said. The eighth thing that you need to know is that both healing and suffering can be uh, used for a higher purpose. Uh, God may use suffering for a higher purpose than we can understand. Uh, sometimes uh, God will let us go through some stuff so that we grow in grace. Uh, sometimes God's got to squeeze us and get the junk out of us before he can use us. And so maybe, maybe, maybe your healing is not for now. It's, it's, it's you're suffering or you're going through something. Let me put it that way. So that you can be prepared for something that's going to come later on in your life. Uh, Daryl Coley, thank you, Holy Ghost, uh, says he's preparing me for something I can't handle right now. He's making me ready for what he's going to do in my life. Sometimes you, you got to get over this other stuff in order that God can bless you with what your real purpose in life will be. So don't, 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 don't think that your suffering is in vain. It is always for a better purpose because nine, uh, ultimate healing will take place in heaven. Yeah, when, when, when we all get to heaven, uh, we will be whole, we'll be complete, we'll be all as we want to. And if there's anybody that gets to heaven sick, don't worry about it. They say in, in heaven, there, there is a stream 
and on, on, on both sides of the river, that stream that runs through the city, there are trees. And, and the trees that are on both sides of the river bear 12 manner of fruit, and the fruit thereof is good for the healing of a nation. Uh, in heaven, it, it's the place we call no more. No more doctors, no more sickness, no more pain, no, no, no more trouble. Uh, uh, so when we all get to heaven, we will have our ultimate healing. Uh, yeah, Jesus uh, says that healing is the children's bread. And, and, and Jesus is able to heal all manner of sickness and disease. So, so, so why this issue? Or what is this issue of blood? Apart from the, the more usual meaning of issue, the word is used biblically in connection with disease. It's in Leviticus, uh, the 15th chapter, verse 2. The Bible in basic English reads, Say to uh, the children of Israel, If a man has an unclean flow from his flesh, it will make him unclean. So uh, an issue is a discharge which renders his victim Ritu uh, ritually unclean. But, but in Leviticus 12, 7, the word changes to, to, to apply to a female discharge. It says in the Bible, basic English again, uh, uh, the priest is to make an offering of it before the Lord and take away her sin. And she will be made clean from of the flow of her blood. This is the law for a woman who gives birth to a male or female. And, and this same word is used in Matthew's gospel, the ninth chapter, the 20th verse, Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter, the 25th verse, and here in Luke's gospel, chapter 8, verse 43. There is uh, this Hebrew word, uh, I can't pronounce it, and the Greek word I won't even try, uh, but, but it, they both are used in Leviticus 15 and 33, and in that verse, the Bible in basic English, again, I'm using uh, the Bible in basic English because I don't want to confuse myself or you about this issue. For, for the Bible says, uh, for her who has a flow of blood, and for any man or woman who has an unclean flow, and for him who has sex relations with a woman when she is unclean. Uh, uh, and so it refers to an issue of blood. But it's most likely that the woman of Luke 8.43 had men or racist uh, let me let me try that again. Menoressa. Uh, it's 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 an excessive menstrual discharge. The menstrual uh, cycle of a woman uh, is a physiological feature of of the life of this woman in the uh, uh, reproductive phase of life that renders them ritually unclean, according to the Jewish law. But, but, but the woman with an issue of blood in the text has a disease, which uh, the, the menstrual flow is abnormally prolonged. Uh, her, in her case, it has been a continuous flow for 12 years and may have caused uh, what, what they call when, when, when anemia. Yeah, that's what it's called. And, and so, so when we read it, and she has this flow for 12 years, and no wise is made better, but continues to get worse because of this flow. Uh, when, when you read the account of her life, uh, three things twist her. Her life uh, is, is turned into trouble. Uh, look, look, look at just verse 843. I know you didn't close your Bible. Uh, we're Bible preacher. We're Bible believing church. Look, Luke uh, eight forty three. It says, "And a woman having an issue of blood, twelve years, 
which has spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed of any. Uh, three three, three uh, uh, things uh, twist in her life. Num num number one, she's sick. Yeah, don't, don't, don't miss it. Number two, she is segregated. And, and number three, she is spent. Uh, yeah, the, this, this text uh, uh, tells us that, that she is sick, that she's segregated, and that she is spent. Watch, watch this. Uh, she's sick. She has an issue of blood. Her body was not functioning normal. Blood was continuously flowing from her every day. Uh, uh, she, she could not do the things that other women did. Her, her body would not allow her to do what she wanted to do. And, and, and with this loss of blood, uh, her, her, her blood pressure would, would be low. And, and with low blood pressure, she would feel dizzy, lightheaded, and, 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 and her vision would be blurred. She, she would be weak and have fainting spells and feel tired and confused, and, and her stomach would continuously be nauseous, uh, uh, upset. She would, she would uh, lose her, her weight, and she would have shortness of breath and be weak, her, her heartbeat would be slow, and, 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 and she couldn't uh, do all of the things that she wanted to do for always being uh, uh, fatigued and groggy and, 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 and sick. Yeah, she was sick. And, and, and get this, uh, it wasn't getting any better. As a matter of fact, the text is implicit that she grew worse. She is sick. But, but, but not only was she sick, because of the sickness, she, she was segregated. She was not allowed to be uh, with others because of the Jewish law and the norms of her society. Uh, she had to live a solitary life. She was not uh, allowed to interact with other people. She was made to suffer alone in silence. No friend stopped by to see her, no male companionship, no personal contact. And, and one of the biggest reasons for her segregation, her being alone, it was common belief that if you were sick, it was because there was sin in your life and, and, and God was punishing you for the sins you had committed. And, and because that was the prevailing thought of the day, even the person that was sick would believe that God was against them and punishing them. That's, that's how sick she was. Can, can you imagine being all alone and not getting any better and, and for 12 long years discontinued? Uh, uh, and, and can you imagine not, not being able to be out in the street, not being able to go as you please? And if you felt like going, uh, by the time you got up and got dressed, you were too tired to go. Uh, she is sick and segregated. And so because of that, she spent. Uh, she, she spent all her living. Uh, all of it is gone now. 12, 12 years of doctor visits and no copay, 12 years and no cure, 12 years of prescriptions and buying personal care items and, and still no better, no, no income because she couldn't go to work, she was sick. All of her saving is gone, no, no land to sell, she was not allowed to own property, but, but more than all of that, the tangible things that we can think of being, being gone, she is spent physically. No, no, no more strength in her body, spent emotionally, uh, no hope of getting any better. Waste, uh, uh, all the hope that she had is wasted on medicine uh, uh, that didn't work. She spent spiritually why would she pray when, when, when God is punishing her? Or, 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 or why would she pray when she doesn't know what she did wrong in order to get in this condition? And nothing she has said to God in 12 years has done her any better. Uh, uh, nothing happened. She, she spit, I tell you. She segregated and she's sick. 
but also uh, with, with her life being, being spent, her, her life being segregated, with, with her life being sick, she gets smart. Yeah, did you hear me? She, she, she gets smart. Uh, she's heard of a new teacher who, who, who is healing the sick. And, and raising the dead and feeding the poor. She, she, she's heard about a, a, a new uh, a guru in town. She's heard that, that there's a, a possibility that life can be turned around. It's Matthew's gospel, the 21st chapter. Uh, no, the 9th chapter, the 21st verse that said, she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Mark, Mark 5, 27 and 28, she says, when she heard of Jesus, uh, came into the press behind him and touched his garment, and before she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. But, but it's Luke I like. Luke, Luke the medical doctor. Luke the logical thinker in the crowd. Luke the, the gospel that writes for the humanity of all of us. Luke says she came behind him at the, at the, at the, at the verse and, and, and touched his, the, the border of his garment and get this, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. Oh God, watch, watch, watch this, you, you got to understand. Stanch is a medical term. It means to stop or restrict a, a flow of a, a blood from a wound. When, when this woman touched Jesus, her issue was stopped immediately. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it stopped it. And, and what, a, what a miracle that was. But, but, but did you, I neglect to tell you that this miracle is not just about her? As, 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 as a matter of fact, uh, uh, this woman is intruding on someone else's time. And, and, and someone else's need. She, she, she's butting me in where, where she shouldn't be. Uh, the 43rd verse that I started at starts with the word and because uh, it connects us with what is going on before she gets to Jesus. And, 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 and because Jesus is already on his way to Jarvis' house. He, he, Jarvis is the ruler of the synagogue and his daughter, who is about 12 years old is dying and, and, and the crowd is following with Jesus. So the woman gets healed uh, in, in, in the midst of him, Jesus doing something else for somebody else. Well, oh my God, oh, wait a minute. I, I neglected to tell you that, that Jarvis's daughter is about 12 years old and this woman has been sick for about 12 years. And, 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 and so the woman got sick when Jarvis' daughter is, is, is born. And so now Jarvis' daughter is about to die, but the woman is about to get hit. You, 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 you don't see the symbolicness of this, that, that one thing is dying and the other thing is going to die at the same time. But both are going to be made whole because after Jesus deals with the woman, he goes back to Jarvis' house and there he, he, he wakes the, the little girl up. And so the little girl gets healed even, even though this woman has interrupted. But back to the text. Uh, 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 three things happen uh, in the text. And so the text is tailored to teach us three tremendous truths. I know you didn't think I was going to see it, but I did. Num 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 number one, uh, uh, she stops Jesus. Num number two... She speaks to Jesus, and number three, she gets saved. Uh, watch this. You, you got to see the progression of this. Uh, she stops Jesus. It's, it's verse 45 and 46 that says, And Jesus says, Who touched me? And when all denied, P Peter, Peter and they that were with him said, uh, Master, the multitude, they throng you and press thee, and says, Thou, uh, which, who touched me? Uh, 46 says, Jesus says, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Je Jesus is walking with Jarvis back to his house, and, and there's a crowd of, of, of people following, pushing, and shoving, and touching one another as they go. This, this woman, and, and we, we don't even know her name, 
is, is crawling through the crowd, making her way unnoticed. And, and, and because if anybody would have seen her, they would have made her uh, 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 get out of the crowd. They'd have made a fuss about her being in public. She is unclean, and she has no right to be around people. And so, so without anyone uh, uh, noticing her, without anybody being aware of her, she reaches out and touches Jesus, and, and he stops and asks, uh, who was that? Or, 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 oh, you, you, you're making this too long. Uh, 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 if, if you were here in the sanctuary with me and hollered at this time, I, I, I would have known that, that I could have uh, uh, just moved forward without pressing this point. But because I can't hear you and you're not making any noise where you are, could it be uh, uh, that this is your story? Or, or better yet, let me tell you, it's my story. We were unnoticed, un unsure, and unrecognized, and un un unregenerated. We, we weren't fit to live and couldn't afford to die. But then we met Jesus, and he noticed us. He stopped and helped us. Uh, Peter says it, it's too many people who, who, who knows how, how many people are bumping you. Je Jesus says, I'm not talking about being pushed by the crowd. I'm not talking about somebody bumping me. Too many people just, just want to bump up against Jesus. Yeah, too many people just, just want to wanna, wanna stop and holler at him and, and keep going. Uh, and, and, and you said you don't understand. I, uh, Jesus says, I felt yeah, I felt virtue leave me. Virtue is de defined as uh, comfortability to a, to a standard of right uh, morality, uh, a particular moral excellence, uh, a beneficial quality or power of a thing, uh, mainly uh, strength or courage, valor, uh, commendable qualities that, that, that merit something, a uh, capacity to act, uh, uh, chastity, especially in women, in short, power over whatever the human spirit is being troubled by. Uh, yeah, interesting. Back in, in, in 1768, the church came up with a, with a, a term, celestial hierarchy. It listed a traditional hierarchy of, of, of angels ranked from the lowest to the highest. In that list, if you would follow it from, from down upwards, uh, the order would go something like this, that you begin with angels, then archangels and then principalities and powers and then you get to virtue and from virtue uh, you get dominions and thrones and cherubims and cherubims that stand around the throne and, and praise Christ all day long but Jesus stopped uh, uh, when this woman touched him because he said virtue uh, the power to overcome anything that troubles the human spirit has gone out of me so she, she stops Jesus. And, 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 and secondly, she speaks to Jesus. It's, it's at verse 47. Don't miss it. And when the woman uh, saw that she was not hid, uh, when the woman saw that, 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 that Jesus noticed that virtue had gone out of him, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him. And how she was healed. Yeah, immediately this woman makes her testimony public. Her, her healing uh, becomes a statement of faith. Her, her private act is now her public shout. L listen to me, uh, uh, Jesus, she says. Uh, Jesus will, will never, never, ever uh, uh, let you be uh, connected with him in secret. Uh, Jesus will never ever allow himself to be a secret lover, the one you call late at night when you're all alone. But, but as long as it is day, uh, uh, you, you're out uh, with others, you're running around and, and, and playing with the crowd, doing your own thing. But, but I hear Jesus, uh, as he says in Luke 12, just a few chapters forward, uh, at verse 8 and 9, I, I say unto you, uh, whosoever shall confess me before uh, uh, men shall uh, the Son of Man uh, uh, also confess before 
uh, the angels of God. But, but, but he that denied me before men shall be denied before the angels. Yes, Lord, uh, 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 of God. Can, can I tell you? Uh, 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 can, let, well, you, can, I, can I just say it this way, that you need to speak to, to Jesus. Uh, Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We used to say in the old church, uh, uh, once I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He filled my heart with love and he wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let's tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear our faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. You'll feel a little prayer wheel turning and you'll know that the fire is burning. And just a little talk with Jesus will make it right. Well, I'm, I'm on my way to my chair, but at verse 48, uh, Jesus says to her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy fate has made thee whole. Go in, in peace. He, he, he calls her daughter, not woman, but daughter. He, he adopted her on the spot. He, he made her a part of the family and told her uh, the Bible in basic English. Again, you ought to get what? Daughter, your fate has made you well. Go in peace. No, no, no more being sick. Uh, no more being, being segregated. No more being spent. She is free and free indeed. I, 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 I got to quit. But, but, but are you sick and, and tired of being sick and tired? Are, are, are you segregated, alone, and lost, and afraid of, of being alone all by yourself? Are you spent and struggling and, and with the sin and the shame that, that so easily besets you? Can, can you? can you imagine your life being different? Well, I, I, I tell you, you can be saved. Uh, uh, you can have... Uh, uh, your life turned around. Uh, you, you can make a, a, a decision today to, to leave the, the sickness that you find yourself in and walk in a marvelous light. Uh, all you have to do is believe the gospel. That is that Christ was born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he died a vicarious death, and he rose in victory. All, all, all you got to do is believe the old gospel story. Let, let me tell it like I, I, I want to tell it. All, all you have to do is trust that he came down to 40 and two generations, that he got off in Bethlehem, Judea, that he healed the sick, he raises the dead, he opens blinded eyes, he straightens with the limbs, the lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear. You need to know that, that they lied on him and stole him from his praying ground, whipped him all night long, got him outside the city wall, nailed his hands, riveted his feet, lifted him high, dropped him low. The sun refused to shine, the moon ran down in blood, stars fell from the silver socket, the earthquake and dead folks stood and watched him die. He died for the sins of the world. He died that we might live. He died that we might be set free. He died that we might be healed, delivered. He died, I tell you, and they buried him in a borrowed grave. They watched him three days and three nights, but on the third day morning, he got up with all power of heaven and earth in his hand, he boarded a cloud, went back home, sits at the right hand of God, and there he is now making intercession for you and I. But one of these days, he'll drop from bright glory. Every eye's gonna see him, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess he's Lord. And so why not trust him today? Why not believe him by faith and be whole and complete? Why not just give yourself to him right now and let this day be the best day for the rest of your life? All you have to do is trust him by faith. Simply ask him into your life. If you want to do that, repeat this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you are the son of God. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. And by this confession, I accept my own salvation. 
rich, full, and complete. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. If you said that prayer, I believe, as we say in the church, you got born again. That means that your life has been changed, and eternally you're safe in the arms of Jesus. God bless you. God give you peace. It is our prayer. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. What, what, what a wonderful time I've had preaching this gospel to you. Listen, let me tell you, don't, don't get twisted. Uh, don't, don't be sick. Don't, don't be segregated. And, and please, please, whatever, don't be spent. Get smart. And when you get smart, you can, you can stop Jesus. And, and when you stop him, then, then you can speak to him. And after you speak to him, he'll save you. And so, so if you just get smart, stop him wherever you are, whatever is going on in your life. He's passing by, stop him. Speak to him. Give, give your testimony. And then let him save you throughout all of eternity. That's my prayer. God bless you. Now, now, now before I, I, I let you go, uh, I need to take the offering. It's time to give the offering. What do we say? Trust the Lord. Let me, let me say like those professional televangelists say, if this ministry has done you any good, if, if this, this word that we preach at has helped you, as we minister to you in spiritual things, minister back in carnal things. I want to thank you for being faithful in your giving. Uh, as, as you give, we, we're able to do what God has assigned us to do, and we can get this gospel out to you. And so there are three ways that you can uh, make yourself a partner with us. You can go to our uh, website uh, there, push the donate button, and you'll be directed to the play PayPal platform. Use your bank card there, and you can give uh, without any trouble. You can also go uh, directly to the snail mail or put a stamp on it, send it to the office, 1302 uh, South Sawyer, Chicago, Illinois, 60623. Drop it in the mail, and we'll receive it. The mail is secure. Or come by the office, drop it in the box, uh, leave it with the office personnel, and we'll receive your offering. Or... Last but not least, the best way, and it is becoming the most popular way, from your account directly to our account, use the Zelle platform and, and just send it to Great Open Door, the number one, at AOL.com. We will receive it. Let me tell you that we're grateful for whatever it is that you do and how you contribute to keep this ministry moving forward. God bless you, and thank you for your offering. Now, uh, before I leave you, let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. Now, go in peace this week knowing that you're blessed of God. Say it.